Well, I would say that the tenure of our superintendents is actually fairly typical nationally of large urban districts. Um, so we are not an outlier in this. Uh, that said, it's really important to have a superintendent who can stay and help us really um, accomplish our goals. I think that the progress the board has made in defining what its expectations are for the district will actually help us hire a strong superintendent and help that superintendent know when he or she is on track on meeting those goals and um, will we'll, um, make it easier to hire and retain a superintendent. Well, I think there are really two parts to that. One is a superintendent who embraces the, uh, the, the direction the board is going in establishing our goals for the district and our guardrails for the superintendent to accomplish them. But also I want the superintendent to reflect the values of our community. And by that I mean someone who um, embraces diversity, um, embraces the multicultural community that we're in, and uh, is willing to embrace our multiculturalism policy, which really is very inclusive. Well, I think there are a couple parts to that too. One is advocacy for better pay for our teachers. So um, pay isn't everything, but pay is a lot. And that is advocacy at the level of our state legislature and also at our county commission. Those are the two funding sources that we have for um, teacher base salary and also a county supplement because we're finding that teachers can't afford to live in Mecklenburg County on the state salary. Teachers and other educators and staff. So that's one. I mean, pay isn't everything, but it's, if you've got to pay rent, it's a lot. Um, the other is to um, establish a culture uh, from the top down that values teacher voice um, I am very proud to be the only candidate in my race that is endorsed by the teachers group, the Charlotte Mecklenburg Association of Educators, because I have a proven track record of listening to their concerns and amplifying those and working with them to make sure um, that our teachers feel valued and heard. Because after all, you know, teacher working conditions are our students' learning conditions. We need our teachers to be satisfied and empowered in their schools for our students to be successful. Well, from the top down, leadership sets a tone for, for a culture. And it, it has to go through several steps uh, to get to the schoolhouse, but I think it starts at the top. It starts with our superintendent and, and his, his or her cabinet. Uh, but then, you know, principals have tremendous power to establish a culture. And you know there are principles that staff will follow around the district, even if it means commuting across the county. So we need to support those principles and help our new principals gain those skills to build a school culture that's supportive and empowering for teachers. Well, first of all, as you said, the scores are not the be all and end all. And I think if parents want to understand what's going on in a school, they need to go visit. They need to go, go to open houses, visit classrooms, watch the teaching and learning happening. Because the scores are, are just the tiniest um, barometer of what's happening in a school. Um, that said, growth is really important. That means how, you know, if students are actively learning. And, you know, we have some schools where children come to school um, not without without the benefit of preschool or the benefit of living in an English language environment. So we have students who come to us with linguistic diversity, which is amazing. And we want them to keep that those linguistic skills while also learning English. So, you know, those are the kinds of things that you need to look at when you look at schools. Well, I think that um, one needs to just visit our schools, that's, that's one. Charter schools um, have a very, diff as you said, they play by different rules. Uh, they, don't, they don't have the numbers of English language learners, they don't take as many students with disabilities, they certainly don't um, provide 
um, the kinds of services for exceptional children that CMS does. And you know, once once you enroll in a charter school, throughout that school year, the enrollment only goes down. Whereas in CMS, students come to us from charter schools, from home schools, from out of state, all year long. Um, I mean, one of my um, opponents in this race is, has been on the board of a charter school. And while that school has um, less than 10% of its students experiencing poverty, the racial achievement gaps are huge, with white and Asian students far outperforming African American students. So, you know, I don't think there's a, a simple answer to this. Um, you know, we have. Um, centuries of racial um, impact on everything in our system from education to health care to housing and all those things impact our students and that's those biases um, enter enter all aspects of our lives including our schools and that's something that CMS has been proactive in looking at, in one, um, educating our staff on anti-racist work, also to make sure that our curriculum is culturally responsive and inclusive, and that our staff understand how to teach in culturally responsive ways. All those things are important. You know, I think the key to have our students feel safe is for every student to have a trusted adult in the schoolhouse. Now it doesn't have to be a teacher, it can be an administrator, it can be a custodian, it can be a bus driver, but every student needs to have someone who sees them and understands them and recognizes their humanity and that will build a safer school environment. That's clearly a national, a national issue. Uh, I know that our board ha are, has been working with um, law enforcement in, in Charlotte and the surrounding towns and other government agencies to work to, um, cr to create a safer storage uh, for guns. Um, you know, we've had students who've you know, picked up a gun at home and brought it to school young children, children who should not have access to, to guns or ammunition. So one is getting the community to embrace safe storage. Uh, the bigger picture, frankly, there are too many guns in our culture, in our society, but as a school board member, there's not a lot I can do to, to curtail that. But, you know, we have, there's too easy access to, to weapons in our culture.